Coach, they say uh, old habits are hard to break. Is there any concern with Tyron uh, heading back to like his MMA ways during the fights, or has he done that inspiring at all? Well, we had some fun um, experiences in sparring where he um, pulled out a couple moves, <laughs> but um, nah, there's, there's no concern at all, man. No concern at all. That was that was way in the beginning of the camp, and uh, it was fun to see. It was fun to see and fun to get him out of the system. Was there was there a lot of cleaning up to do with MMA boxing? You know, headed into just straight boxing? Not at all. You guys are gonna be surprised. You'll see uh, fight night that. Um, he got he has a great boxing background. What were you he most had to polish him up? What were you most impressed with? Power, um, his defense. Awesome, awesome defense. What do you see from Jake that may uh concern you or that you like out of his camp and what he's doing? Nothing concerns me, but um I like Jake as a fighter. Uh, I like that he entered our realm and um because there wouldn't be a, a Woody Paul fight if he wasn't, you know, if he didn't start boxing. So I like Jake even before his um all this came about. Um, I was a Jig fan, so um, you know. But I went against other fighters that I was fan of as well and beat them. So you know, um, nothing at all. So is it safe to say Jake Paul is actually kind of good for boxing, or? Yeah, I, I, I think he's great for boxing. He's bringing um, more money, more people, um, more pay-per-view buys, which is going to turn more people more money, and um, just more eyes to the sport. You know, people say boxing's dead. It's never, it never will die. It never was dying. But um, it's now just going to grow and get bigger. So I, I think he's great for boxing. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. How do you prepare for somebody that's only had three fights and hasn't been in there for more than two rounds? Like, how do you take a look at those things? And what do you, uh, how do you prepare for? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you prepare for, for, say one more time? How do you prepare for somebody who's only had, you know, three fights, has only been in the ring for no more than two rounds total, maybe about five minutes in the ring. So how do you prepare for that? Uh, as you would for somebody who's been in a, a thousand rounds and uh, won, 12 world titles, 12 divisions, you know, your best, prepare them um, the best, you give them different looks, you see, um, you have them smart people who have very little background in boxing, you have them smart people who have you know, a whole bunch of experience, amateur and pro, so um, so that you're ready, you know, you cover all, you know, you're ready for whatever. Anyway. What do you think about it? Jake uses his jab very well, so one thing that a lot of MMA fighters have ne not necessarily been known for over the years, but Jake does, he uses his uh, jab to create distance. Yeah, I figured out ways to work around that. Oh, yeah, that's, um, for me, you know, I, I kind of like fought like Floyd, and, you know, um, he takes away his, his opponent's jab um, first round, or if not first, second round, and to the point where they don't even use it. I mean, if you pay attention to Floyd fights, um, the fighters who gave him the most trouble are orange jabbers, so that's because he takes it away. In terms of Woodley, you talk about his defense. Um, why does that surprise you so much? Is it because MMA fighters aren't necessarily known for the defense when it comes to boxing? Yeah, but they're, you know, if, if you watch the, their fights, they're they're defending a whole lot of stuff, you know. So now he has to just defend upper body. So um, I didn't put that in consideration before I seen his defense. Like, okay, now he just had to worry about this. So it's way easier for him to make stuff miss. Last question for me. In terms of the emotion, we saw what happened yesterday. Tyra said it's cool. Right. But do you still think that you might have to kind of check that emotion, you know, being in this corner on Sunday night? Yeah, yeah. I'm one of those um, more safe than sorry kind of trainers and person, period, in life. Um, so I, I immediately went to him if you can watch the footage because it's footage of the whole event. Um, I went straight to him and told him that, you know, calm down. Um, we know what that was. We were prepared for anything that was coming our way, you know, outside the ring and inside the ring. So calm down. And he let me know. He well, when I said that, he, he barked, and so he wasn't calm. <laughs> so, so because uh, I thought I was kind of scared, he was about to knock me out. So uh, I, I, I calmed him down a little bit more after, you know, we, when the cameras went away. And then um, I had to also make a, a phone call to um, Floyd to help to get him to help him because Floyd is a master of not letting people get under his skin. And he, he'll get him, you know, even with the Judah situation where Judah jumped in, it was a fight and a big old fiasco. Floyd was in the corner calm, you know, when he should have been. Well, most people would have been in there fighting with, along with everybody else. So I knew Floyd could um, help me in that situation, and he did. So, but we're still gonna remind him because you know that that energy is still there. You know, and when you see somebody, you might get triggered. You know, just anybody with that color orange on might trigger uh, my mama. You know, so um, we're gonna stay on top of it, and make sure he's straight. That's funny though, because Floyd, Jake got on. It's easy. Speak easy, baby.